Let's see if we can get a little bit more of that oil out. Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Now tomorrow I'm going to be heading up to Argyle on the Royal Enfield Himalayan. It's a good three, three and a half hour drive or ride. And then the bike's going to be parked up for about a week. Now the bike's just crossed about ten and a half thousand miles. So I've decided rather than leave it, I'm going to do a quick oil change. Stay tuned. First things first, we want to just turn the engine on, leave it ticking over for 10 minutes or so. Of course, you can take the bike for a ride if you want to. I've decided I'm just going to let it tick over for 10 minutes and then I'll let it cool down again for another 5 10 minutes because that oil is going to come out hot. I don't want to burn myself, yeah? But you still you want to get that nice and loose, nice and warm, and it'll flow easier. Of course, when you're doing this, you want to get the bike up on the centre stand and you want to have something to catch the oil there. I like to put a bit of cardboard here or paper or something that you can just, you know, stop that oil from getting up underneath the sump guard and stuff like that. Just means it's less messy to clean up afterwards. This is your sump plug here, it's a 22mm. Now, ordinarily, I just pull that out and let that drain from there, but today, I'm actually going to take this plate off because I want to check the little filter that's inside here. I need to take this um, plate off on every single oil change. Um, but I like to do it just to make sure that this is completely clean. But I also take out the 22mm bolt as well because if you don't take that out, eventually it's going to start welding in there. You know, and you don't want that. Let's just take this off by hand now. Don't want to be dropping bolts in the oil, just makes a little bit more of a mess than needs to be. This little filter here, guys, is the reason that I'm taking this plate off today, yeah? I want to just take that out, make sure it's nice and clean before we put it back in. Again, you don't need to do this in every single oil change, but I just think it's a good idea. It depends on how much time you have, guys, but I like to leave this for quite a while. You know, just let gravity do its job. You don't really want to rush this. Now I'm going to tip the bike, once this is out a little bit more, I'm going to tip the bike ever so slightly. Today I've decided I'm going to get all of the oil out of this engine. And I don't, again, you don't ordinarily always have to do this. In fact, I don't actually recommend it on every oil change. But I'm going to get the oil out of the pipes and the oil out of the pump and stuff as well. And I'll just show you exactly how I'm going to do that. I've been asked a few times since I installed the GV engine guards if you need to take them off to remove the oil filter, change the oil filter. Oh, you don't. So just be careful with these little bolts, guys. You're unlikely to strip them or anything, but remember, they're aluminium, yeah, and an aluminium head, or at least some kind of <laughs> alloy blend. With the oil filter, there's a longer bolt at the bottom and then two shorter bolts at the top. Now, I loosened all three. I'm going to remove the top two first and then the bottom one last. Oil filter cover spring mounted, guys. We'll be cleaning this up and replacing the gasket as well, obviously. This is really not ideal without gloves. It doesn't matter. You can always wash your hands. Now, as I said earlier, I'm going to try and get as much oil out of this the engine as possible. There's still some oil up in the pipes and up in the pump and stuff so I'm going to quickly run the engine just for a few seconds to try and get as much oil out of this as possible. too bad there's not too much oil in there not bad at all you see different methods on this people do it different ways I like to keep it a little bit neat so I put a little bit of oil inside and I just let that soak through the paper from the inside a lot of people will leave it to soak in a bag or they'll leave it in their oil or whatever but I'm just gonna put it in like this good enough you don't need to force it, but you want to get it on there nice and firm. Got a little bit of oil on my new gasket there. Yeah. You don't need to go mad with it. Just run a tiny little bit around on your finger. And then let's just put it in the right place. I find it easier just to start to seat the longer one at the bottom first. And then work on the two at the top. Now just make sure you're super careful with this. You don't want to thread these bolts. That's a disaster. Especially on an area like this, you know, where you're having to do regular oil changes. 
a bit of anti seize on there. Don't run one in and then <laughs> try and do the other two. Just work them in nice and even. All I'm doing here, guys, is just getting some of that residue out. Again, you don't need to go mad with it, but the more the merrier. I've given this little plate a little bit of a clean up. You see, somebody's drawn an arrow on there at some point. No doubt someone at Royal Enfield, <laughs> yeah? So we're going to put this back in now that it's cleaned up. You can't really get this wrong, guys. It's tapered. If you try and put it in the wrong way around, it won't fit, <laughs> yeah? I've just cleaned up this plate here before I put it back on. I'm just double checking the little O-ring. It's in good condition. Now, guys, you don't need to do this, but I've got a tiny little smidge of nickel anti-seize on here. Some people prefer copper slip or whatever. Just whatever works for you. The nickel anti-seize is a little bit more expensive. Yeah, holds up to the heat better. That's not a, a major concern on an area like this, to be honest. It's just to make sure that you never really have any issues with those bolts seizing up. Just don't overdo it with the anti-seize and also just be careful that you don't over torque the bolts. It's really easy to over torque a bolt when it's got anti-seize on it. Yeah, so you need to be super careful. You need to drop probably about 25% on it. Once you get your oil back in there guys, you want to be checking for leaks. <laughs> if anywhere's going to leak, it'll come out of this plate for sure. I've got exactly one litre in here at the moment. Now, the recommendation is 1550 oil in the Himalayan. Now, you can do this however you like. I like to use a funnel and a jug. I can be more accurate with it. Less likely to spill it. Oil Enfield will tell you that the initial fill on these bikes is 2.3 litres. Yeah? And then, you're looking at something like 1.6 Somewhere between 1.6, 1.8. Yeah. Now, bearing in mind, I've took as much oil out of this bike as I possibly can by running it out the pipes. Obviously, it's not fully settled yet, but I'm going to say this is nowhere near enough oil. That's 1.6 litre in there, and that's before I've run it through the engine. So, as you can see, it's just below the minimum mark. However... The bike doesn't need to run forever, yeah, just a couple of minutes. It's still on the centre stand there. We're just letting that oil go up through the system. Then we're going to let it settle again for about 10 minutes. Check that level and top it up. And I like to take it up to, you know, just at that maximum fill level. Right, so we've let that settle again. I reckon we need about another 200 mil at least, just to take it up to that top line. Thank you.